You want to shut off and call me back? Yeah, let's try that. Let's yeah. try that. Yeah, let's All try right. that. Okay, now you add her to the call. Me add Rico? Yeah. Are you, are you back with us? Can you hear me? Yeah, we, yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Yeah. Yep, yeah, we can hear you. Okay, yeah. Um, uh, back to my question. Yeah, yeah, my question was how were you... Uh, hired for Castlevania, you know, from, like I said, uh, it seemed to be the first time you worked with Konami. You said that was the first game they were going to produce like this. So, um, yeah, how, what was the story behind that? Ah. Gabe, you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, everything... Oh my. Yeah, we're having some difficulty here. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty bad. <laughs> um, uh, this is this is why Google this is why Google Fiber needs to be mandatory. Um, uh, internet speed, one gig would be perfect for everything. is calling her phone? Please leave your message for Rika Muramaka. Us. There should, there should be a button that says call Skype, I mean... That's not. what I was trying to do, and then it would call her phone. Oh. That's, that's odd. Hello? Hi! Hey. Hello there. Hi. <laughs> okay, um, now we've finally gotten that all taken care of. Or, hopefully. For, uh, for some reason, I tried to call you back a couple times and it kept calling your phone. I don't, I don't understand. Um... Okay, uh, back to where we were. Yeah, so we're... Get that out of the way. Uh, yeah, go ahead and give us the story behind Castlevania. Um, I'm really interested in that one. I'd love to hear that. I saw the advertisement on a newspaper, uh, like a Wall Street Financial. 
substantial and the keyboard magic. I went to my, my friend's studio and he had a keyboard magazine. I was looking at the keyboard magazine and I saw that advertiser say, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah I can hear you. It keeps cutting in and out again. Um, hello? Hello. Can you hear us? Let me, let me do this. Yeah, let me just do on my phone. My phone might be better. Okay. Yeah. Can do that. That's fine. Yeah, if we're not doing video, we should be fine with that. Okay. Yeah, this is audio. I think the audio might be better. Okay. That'll yeah. be fine. Okay. All right. Okay, hold on. Man. Oh, my. I don't like the internet. I mean, I do, but I don't. Yeah, I expected a heavier Japanese accent. Yeah, so oh, same here, man. Um, yeah, I mean, it's crazy, man. I think it has to do with their coming over here, like I so, said, like kind of a younger age. Yeah. You know, cause she was studying um, jazz over here as a teen, if I remember correctly. Yes. Yeah. And I was going to tell her, I was like, 16 years old, that's pretty young to be in a jazz club. Hello? Hello. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Oh, perfectly. Oh, this this is yeah. this is amazing. I told you this is this is better. I keep telling this smartphone is much better than sometimes PC, <laughs> and uh, it has uh. a. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, Castlevania. Okay, let's back to uh, Castlevania. Okay. Um, people always want to know how do I get you know job at the Konami because now is is so like impossible. If you try to get a job anywhere, <laughs> yeah. that's Konami. <coughs> but when I started out, the video game was not a real like a video game industry, like now, and uh, people were kind of laughing at them. Uh, rec especially record companies, like uh, it's like, well, why are you working for you know, video game company? And uh, they were like, uh, kind of like prejudice towards record com uh, you know, recording industry was kind of like a. Uh, um, really prejudiced against a video game company because they're like, are you writing for like a Mario type of music? You know, beep, 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 like real simple. So right. they were like, uh, you know, like they, they were calling me and laughing and I said, what? Are, are you not writing for the uh, video, I mean the music for the record company anymore? What's going on? You know, they were like uh, freaking out, you know? And uh, how I got my job is uh, um, I saw the advertisement in the newspaper and uh Magazine, keyboard magazine. Okay. And uh, I saw the advertisement say graphic artist, C plus plus programmer, and uh, you know they were looking for you know just uh, by every everybody from programmer to sound designer to composers everybody. So I actually uh, you know applied for the Konami, uh, put my resume together and music, and uh, I. I put it out there, and I got a call and said they want to interview me. So I went in, interviewed the guy, and he happened to be the president of the music department at that time, a uh, publishing side. And uh, he and I talked for 45 minutes, and I got hired right on the spot. And he told me, yeah, we really need to change the music because we can't really bring Japanese you know, music to, you know, outside the country because I know they want different types of music in America, so they were, you know, he was asking me, we really got to change the music, and we can't really, really you know, uh, hit the world um, unless we have a really good music with uh, video games, so that's where I came in. So he's like, you're perfect, your music is great, because at that time I had a record deal uh, with the international department, so I already had American music sound from gospel, R&B, hip-hop, um, you know, why not? So he's like, you're perfect. Um, you know, can you write a song for us? And they were like kind of freaking out. If after that, you know, I had a chance to meet Hideo and I sit down in the office and say, Hey, I really, really want you to, you know, write music for us. The Metal Gear Solid, uh, he's like, I really don't know what's going to happen. Well, this is brand new territory for us. 
uh, we don't know what's going to happen. You know, they're, they're, Sony's developing a new PlayStation, you know, game console called PlayStation. And I knew about it, so I'm, I was, like, really, really excited about that. And uh, so that's how everything started out. With the Castlevania was just something like, uh, you know, they told me we really need to have something American song. And so that's when I went to L.A. and recorded with my friend Jeff Lober and uh, Tony Haynes. Uh, he's, like, a multi... Uh, I think he sold about 100 million copies worldwide. He has written um, everybody. You name it from Bobby Brown to Boys and Man to Earth and the Fire. I mean, the list goes on. He's got about 100 platinum and the gold discs. So that's, you know, my first uh, song I, I wrote for Konami. That's how my career started out with the Konami. So I was kind of like a, acting as like a more, not just a composer. I was kind of like more like a consultant. For them, and they would ask me. Then you know, you know, we sit down and talk, and and you know, we were just kind of like uh, tried to figure out what would fit for the you know music for the video game for the future. Then he there had an idea, you know, want to have a, you know, I don't know, you know, I suggested what about the Hollywood you know film composers. So that's how I you know we got Harry, and uh, he asked me to get Harry. Uh, first, he wanted to get uh, Hans Zimmer. Media Venture getting involved, and uh, he got denied, so he came to me again, and you think you could get Harry Gregson Williams, and I said, okay, let me call, let me, let me go and meet with them in L.A., so that's how I, you know, brought Harry into the picture for the Metal Gear. Okay. Oh, oh. So, go ahead and ask me anything. Um, okay, um, uh, Oh. Is this your daughter? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually my son. Uh, oh, okay. Um, hi. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, um, uh, see, so yeah, I was going to ask, um, uh, when you were writing the song uh, I Am the Wind for um, uh, Castlevania, like, what was your actual, like, inspiration, like, in a way? Like, was there anything you were influ influenced by in order to write it the way you did? Or how was the, um, how did that go? I don't know. Um, you know, people always ask me, well, did I inspire? I don't really get inspired to write like I used to. Like when I was a kid, I get inspired to write, oh, you know, uh, I don't know. It's just like, uh, because I never got to see any of the video and people think I, I got to see the video game, you know, actual trailer or something. I never got to see any of the video game or I never even look at the script. You know what I mean? They were just telling me, can you write the song? And I'll just write different types of music. And they're like, oh, then I'll present to them. They're like, okay, can you write like this? Or can you, you know, I like that song, you know. Basically, first, I think the first two video game was, uh, I was pretty much kind of like figured out, or maybe this is the kind of thing they might, they'll tell me this is the game is all about RPG and whatnot. And Castlevania is about the, you know, um, RPG game, and they were, this is the first trial, you know, period of time for them to really break the new game into the world. So they needed something more pop or not hip hop, nothing like that. It's kind of like a middle, down the middle. So I kind of had to figure it out what that what's going to fit in the video game, not just a video game, just for the market. So that's kind of how I write music uh, for the particular, because it's kind of like a commercial writing. Um, but you know, uh, for the for Hideo, it's more like uh, uh, it's not even like it's like mind reading, you know, for him. It's like I had to read his mind what he wants, and he was just giving me a crazy task like, can you write something other than English? And I don't want to know about the language. I I cannot detect the language. So he wants me to write something like that's how I wrote. The best is yet to come because he didn't want to use French, he didn't want to use Spanish, he didn't want to use, you know, German, he didn't want to use, you know, Portuguese. Uh, you know, he had the whole list of the language he knew that he didn't want to use. So I'm like, okay, can you write something that I can't recognize the language? So I said, how about Gaelic? That's how mm. I wrote the, the best is yet to come. And that was a the theme song, uh, opening theme song for the um, Metal Gear Solid, the first one. Mm. That's 
That's right. So it's kind of like a different than other type of uh, job that I've done in the past. You know, then he did tell me, like, oh, can you write the action one, two, three, four, five? Okay, what kind of action? He's like, I don't know yet. Just write me an action, different, five different patterns, five, five different, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, and then, then he would tell wow. me five different sneaky sections, five different types of uh, ambient, you know? I was like, okay. Like I said, in 20 years, I have never seen anything. The script, nothing. Maybe the last one I worked on, the Metal Gear Solid 4, he kind of let us see. Just to, I think he made it just like a, I don't know, 60 second, 90 second little trailer of that scene. That's it. Only one scene. That's it. I never saw anything. Never. Wow. So, wow. so I would have to read his <laughs> mind. It's like he would tell me, like, this is the scene. Maybe, you know, some, you know, this big thing is going to be following, you know, and the snake is trying to run away or something, and he's hiding this and that, you know, and he's just kind of like vaguely, but he changed his mind, so it doesn't matter how he's going to tell me, because he's going to change after he, you know, uh, we submit the music, he's going to change his mind, and oh, by the way, I got inspired to write, you know, because of the music, I got inspired to do it this way, you know, that's how he will, you know, kind of change his story also, by listening to the music. So he's not more, he kind of like, a, he liked the music and he liked to have music kind of like a fit into what he's thinking. So he will write and create every day. So it's a, you know, it's a different process than the other video game company, I'm sure, you know, that I talked to, you know, mm. or any director. He's, he's very unique in that way. And he's very more he's a spontaneous guy. And uh, he has a lot of ideas in his head and he changed his mind constantly. So, you know. Um, it doesn't matter, you know, we come up with the different types of scene, the uh, tracks, different types of music, and then, you know, sometimes, like, I, I end up writing every day for a year, and he d rejected me, you know, every day I would write different types of music, and he rejected, you know, he's a very hard person to please, you know? Wow. That yeah, is, so um, a lot of people probably don't want to work with him because he's very hard and meticulous. He really doesn't know, you know, what to expect until he, you know, you submit it to him. Then he's like, oh, I changed my mind. Oh, I don't like this one. Can you write this again? Then he go back to the first one anyway, you know, after the, you've done about 10 of them. <laughs> <laughs> that, so, <laughs> so how many times did you, uh, when you wrote The Best Is Yet To Come, like how many different times... Did you have to write a song? Oh, the first one, he had no idea. He was actually pleased to get me because I was already a major artist, you know, recording artist at the time. Okay. And nobody wanted to work at that time. The video game was, like I said, 20 years ago, me, me, video game was in the industry they, that people they, wanted to work. Right. You know what I mean? People wanted to work for it. And, oh, I'm writing for a video game. People laugh at you. Okay, that was 28 years ago. <laughs> So I had an advantage, like, okay, I want to write this song this way. And I just told him, hey, look, I'm a musician. I, this is what I do for professional, you know what I mean? This is what I do for a living. So trust me, if you want to get a lick. So I went into his office. I got 100 CDs, let you know, him and his, you know, his producer listen to the music, Gaelic, Irish, traditional Irish music. So I told him, this is the kind of music I want to write. It's, I'm, I'm thinking like a Gaelic and uh, Gregory chant and kind of like, a, you know, combine and come up with a very, like, a calm and, I don't know, mysterious and, you know, have some emotion in it. And, uh, you know, because I, like I said, I never saw the video game, what's going to happen. I just saw Snake, the character of the Snake. And, you know, I never saw anything. So I have no idea about how he so, so kind of like described it to me. I thought it was kind of like a, kind of cool to write Gregory and Chant and uh, in, in the Gaelic, you know, kind of kind of Irish traditional music combined with that. So I told him, I'm just gonna give me a budget. I'm just gonna go island and record and come back with it. So he trusted me and okay, you, you know, since you're the composer, I trust you 100 percent and just come back with the music. And uh, when you know, he was surprised, you know to hear that music and he had that my music and iPod every day listening to it he loved it huh. you know that was the first one right and the second you know, second one was uh, you know the um, 
the New York. He's like, yeah, this year is going to be New York. Okay, can you write something kind of fits with the image of New York? That's how he, you know, gave me older. So it's not like, you know, he is so meticulous about a lot of things. No, he's not. He's just so vague and he doesn't know what he wants until he hears it. Right. You know, so I kind of had to read his mind. So I said, okay, New York. Okay, got to be jazz then. So, you know, then he's like, oh, can we, you know, do the audition? I'm like, okay. So we went to New York and we auditioned in New York. And I, huh. we picked Carla. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that was a, that was a good time. You know, we all went like a, 10 days, 10 people came from Konami. We all went everywhere. I took them, since I know New York a lot, I, I used to do a lot of recording there. So every day I would take them out there everywhere and they had a blast. We had so much fun, you know. So, you know, every every time, you know, we do something, it's kind of get like, you know, then there's a company, you know, the industry kind of got blew up all of a sudden, like after Metal Gear Solid 2, the 3 and 4 was insane, and 5, of course, took about seven years away to come out soon. But, uh, you know, and uh, structure changed, Konami changed, Hideo changed, you know, everybody changed, and uh, except me. <laughs> You know, so yeah, it's it's a different you know different era now. You know, because now the video game industry is bigger than the film industry. They're Absolutely. making more yeah. you know more revenue than the film industry. So you know, so now they have a different you know different attitude towards the composer now. So you know, we're the big boy now. You know what I mean? <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just like, okay, now before like you used to listen to me, so now they don't. <laughs> Yeah, and I do think the reason that the video game industry got so big was because of a lot of the stuff that the Metal Gear series did uh, with Metal Gear Solid, and a lot of that um, also stems from your work too. So, yeah, I think the video game, you know, I I predicted from the get go. I told uh, Hideo, um, hmm. you know, right now nobody know what video game. They're only thinking like, you know, all the recording industry thought was just like they weren't even threat to the record company they weren't even threat to the industry in Hollywood and I told them just a few years you know after this Metal Gear is gonna hit what's gonna happen like Disney Hollywood all the studios are gonna discover oh wow you know what I mean this could be an opportunity for film industry this could be an opportunity for recording industry to to advertise their artists up and coming new artists so what's Activision and other companies doing, Grand Theft Auto, you have a new, you know, uh, release music. They, they actually, a uh, record company had to pay to put their music, their artists into the video game. Before it was, a, you know, uh, the other side, you know, like a video game company had to pay to the record company to get their music into their uh, platform, but now, record company had to pay because they consider that as like a product placement or a way to you know advertise their new artists like a radio or tv or internet you know so now the video game company can't re demand oh we need to get paid to put your music in our video game it's a it's totally different you know um situation now before video game wasn't really big and nobody really cared about it you know they thought the music was just like a Real simple, beep, 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 beep. You know, I mean, the Mario type of thing, you yeah. know? But now it's like a video game music is more far complex than ever. And I think we have a great composers working in video game industry, the music wise. Uh, people really, you know, uh, kind of like now, maybe they start to call up. I think that because I think I was the first one to bring the film composer Harry Gregson Williams into the Metal Gear. And now everybody starts to follow that lead because such a successful video game. I think a lot of, you know, uh, video game decide to start to uh, hire the composer from the film industry. And that trend changed, you know. And the, so that took, uh, you know, probably like a 10 years that people start to discover, oh, wow, you know, the, the video game music is really, really good. You know, before people didn't really, people were really skeptical about, about the video game composer, uh, especially recording industry, 
but now the the standard of the video game music composer is so high, and it's probably equivalent or even better than the film industry. You know. In my opinion, I think the video game composer had to do more because it, uh, it's it's more a lot to it than the film because film you have a the scene that you could actually you know watch and compose yeah. with it. Video game composer, you don't have that luxury. You kind of have to guess and kind of have to feel. Okay, this might be this. And you kind of have to go in, intuitive and the intuition with your gut feeling. You know, with the, okay, I could write different types of music. And maybe that's just how Hideo is. But for me, I had to kind of be read his mind and be more. You know, have to. I don't know. It's just like I. I really had to create something that they haven't heard before. You know. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's six. Yes. Yeah, it's a challenge, you know, it's a challenge for me. Because, uh, you know, he did always have this uh, really crazy, um, you know, he liked the crazy music that nobody even heard before, you know. He's more into, like, a, he he likes to find somebody that nobody knows. You know what I mean? Unknown, unsigned artist. That's why he probably wanted to hire me, because, you know, for him, it's like, I'm not... I was with the major record company at the same time. I wasn't really major in TV world in Japan. So maybe he thought that was kind of, well, plus I spoke English and uh, I understand the culture here in America. So, you know, for, it, it was just a good timing for both of us, you know. Yeah. Daily? <coughs> uh, Hi, uh, Rika, is that how you pronounce it? Yes. Hi, uh, I'm Daly. Uh, I came into the call late. Nice to meet you. Um, nice to meet you. Thank you. Uh, my first uh, question for you is uh, you, you spoke a lot um, about your work over the titles. My question to you is working from Metal Gear Solid 1 uh, to 4, how much more difficult was it progressing from game to game since each game has its own unique uh, theme to it and the time zones are really uh, different? Uh, between the games, one jumps uh, into the like the late 2000s, uh, one set in the 60s, uh, the other two are set in the you know the, the 90s and, and the early 2000s. Was it difficult for you going from game to game to figure out what kind of music you were going to produce for that era of the game? Not really. Like I say, I never got to see any of it. So <laughs> it's the same, <laughs> same process. I just had to guess, you know. It's, it's like a video game. Right. At the end, the, the product is a different era, but I never really played the game, so I don't know. I just have a Hideo actually burn me a CD or, you know, at that time, VHS video so I could see what happened with my music. Oh, that's how you use it? Oh, that's how you did it, you know? And so <laughs> <laughs> it was too difficult for me to play, you know? And I was just like, I'm right. stuck at the elevator. I can't go down there. <laughs> you know, what do I do? You know, so I'm, right, I, I, I'm just I, stuck there. What, what, what am I supposed to do with it? You know? Yeah, so. I can see that. I, uh, but the the main point of the question is when you're when you're doing uh, a game like Metal Gear Solid Three, it's got a it's much different tone uh, than some of the uh, the other stuff that you have done. And the same thing with with Four. Um, when you're when you're picking out like which kind of equipment you're going to use, whether you're going to use guitars or pianos or this kind of stuff, did you have any trouble picking it from game to game to kind of make that the the music that you wanted to make based off what you were told? Not really. I mean, music is you know. I mean, I mean, I just give it whatever is different than. Maybe he liked this, you know what I mean? That's the kind of right. guessing game for me <laughs> every time. You know, for me, working with Hideo is totally different than working with the other director. So I kind of had to give them something that he haven't heard or maybe he might like this, you know? And he was just giving me like, oh, just write me a sad song or, you know, I want a really hard action. You know, he would give me a fast tempo. I want a fast okay. tempo. Okay. You know, then he'll give me like a fast tempo, maybe he goes down to a little bit slower. So I break it down. We usually have a two minutes uh, for the cue and 30 second, you know, uh, 30 second, 30 second, I divide it into four, then the climax at the end. And I'll just give them a, a loop where they can loop. Uh, so what I would do is uh, I'll put it in the files, the different files uh, where they could kind of like cut and 
in pace and oh, that's very you know, smart wherever you know wherever they want to cut and they want to make it longer they could do that then so i have a, like a files after files so it's not just the composing music i had to sit there and organize organize 250 to 300 stems audio files and because i have like a 5.1 surround system so i i end up having like 300 tracks of the audio file that i had to organize and make it you know look like something like they could organize later too so it's this is more of like an organization than anything okay. and working with them yeah it's, it's totally different than composing for other genre of you know record company or artists or film or commercial you know anything it's just working with i think that i believe i think working with hideo was just like a totally different than other video game kind of work i right. gather you know <laughs> by talking to other composers so it was just like an unknown in the world, you know, it's like an open world forever, you know. I right. Mean, you got open question, million questions that you can't answer or you can't even ask him because he really doesn't know either, you know, until you <laughs> deliver. So it's like, okay, until he, he doesn't know. So until you deliver the music and then he was like, oh, okay. And then he would give me another hint. Then you have to write again. Then he'd give me another hint. They, this goes on and on. Then he's like, well, he goes back to the first one. So I think I like the first one. Okay. Hmm. You know, that's just how it goes. Oh. So, yeah, it, it's totally different than working with other composers. I mean, hmm. other directors, I think. Oh. Yeah, that's very that's that's very interesting. Um, I was just thinking about this, too, because uh, you said that um, you never got to see any of the stuff while you were working on it. Um, mm -mm. You know, did you think that... Wait, wait, with the exception of four, which you said you only got like a 90 second trailer thing. Right. Um, do you think that if you had seen the actual uh, the footage and stuff that they were working on, do you think the music would have turned out uh, differently than what you had actually composed? I, I think it would have matched vividly, precisely, as a, because Harry is a film composer. I think he would have been able to write better music for the cue because, you know, that's what... He, Harry's used to, and before, you know, I give him a direction what to, to write, how to write, whatever, uh, depending by talking to Hideo and uh, his uh, producer, and they would give me the idea, then I had to kind of translate that into music, and uh, then I put my, you know, idea into that. Um, then I'll tell Harry, this is the kind of cue that I want, then he gives me, then I'll tell him, no, I want it this way or that way. Then, you know, we kind of you know, make it, but um, even though I think, because I guess I didn't see it, I think it was more freedom, uh, free, so we could create better music, I think, uh, because I think what happened is you kind of get locked in, if you see the uh, scene, you kind of had to lock in, oh, I had to cut here, and I had to, you know, do the transition at 32 seconds instead of 30, you know, I mean, 25 seconds, then you only have a three seconds, then you kind of have to be locked in watching it, you know, instead of just kind of creating the music and let Fidel and other, you know, at the end of the day, they could cut and paste if they wanted to make it longer of a 30 second version of the loop or whatever. So I, I was kind of giving them room so they could kind of play with it, you know. So it, I think it was more like an organic way of making it. I think that's probably why he didn't want us to see it because he kind of wanted to rely on our creativity to give them something challenge. He likes to challenge, so I think that's more like a battle for him. You know, it's always a battle for you know. It's like a, it's always like kind of like fighting. You know, me would yeah. give him you know something better that he comes up with a better idea that would give him something better. It's kind of like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it was more creative, like a battle between us than him. You know, huh. with him. So it was kind of cool. And but at three or four, at the four, you know, he got so busy with uh, being, you know, executive at the Konami, and uh, you know, his job was more demanding. And his team got 300 people instead of 20 people. How we started out was only 20 people. It was more relaxed, and the company was more relaxed. And after they went on an IPO public. And, you know, you have a different opinions from a executive board and board members and the stock, you know, holder. And it became a corporate. So it wasn't very creative environment anymore. You know what I mean? 
So that's why I think that a lot of creativity suffered, and I think that's probably why uh, Hideo got let go because uh, his business sense is you know isn't there. He's a creator, and he doesn't think about the money or budget, anything like that. So he'll continue to make, keep making, you know, game, you know, how he feels like making. Oh, he feels like this is complete. When he's not complete, he keep going, you know. And that's just how he is. And that company can't afford to have a, you know, employee like that. They need to be budget. They need to have a deadline. They need to have a recouping point, you know. And he never doesn't think like that. So you just want to make, create, you know, yeah. whenever he feels like creating. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So you're saying because of his, um, because of his, you know, vision, because of his, uh, well, yeah, because of what he wants to do, it made him like, it made him less of a, um, a, le- a less valuable business, uh, a business person, because he's no, he's not the one to cut dead diet, but cut, uh, cut and dry deadline. You know, same game every time. No, no. He, you know, as you know, as of you know, waiting for fans to, you know, the, how long? You know, what I mean, he always have a projection date of course he's gonna have a, oh yeah we're gonna release it but that release date comes like oh we're gonna delay how long he doesn't know you know what i mean something happened and you know he wanted to create the engine new engine that took a longer than he expected and you know it's something like that fox engine he, he didn't yeah. think he's gonna take a long time but he did so that kind of pushed it back later and a lot of things you know uh he didn't anticipate there's a lot of things in the business he didn't anticipate you know, um, so, you know, it's, it's just like a, he's a creator, and I think uh, he's a really, really good creator, you know, um, one of the best, and he is, but he's not a really good businessman, you know, and uh, when you have a big company like that, you have an employee with six, you know, more than 6,000, you, you, you got to have a business sense, you got to have a, you got to know when, how can I, recoup that money you know if you put down 200 million dollars you gotta recoup at least you know you gotta be able to have a recouping point you know somehow you have to have profit you gotta have a profit he doesn't think about profit you know he think that <laughs> you know if his product is good product is good somebody's gonna buy it you know yeah right back in the day yeah you only had 20 employees working with you but now you got 300 employees staff you know you gotta cover the expenses so it's and, you know, he didn't think like that, you know? So I guess it seems like with Hideo, uh, uh, for him, it was more about the passion and the art rather than making money. He didn't care about the money because he was getting paid, you know, whatever the money he's getting paid for 20 years, the same. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> he already knew he was getting paid. <laughs> no, he didn't care. It was a delay. He's, he's, he's not going to suffer. He's not getting like right. a... Okay, you're making like a two million dollars. You're gonna go down to hundred million, you know, hundred thousand dollars. No, it's not like that. So, whatever he made in the twenty years ago, he told me that's how much he's making. I don't know if that's true or not, but you know, he didn't. You know, he doesn't live in like a fancy Hollywood, you know, luxury lifestyle. You know, right? Uh, it, it's, he's a salaryman in Jap- in Japan. Salaryman, which is you get monthly payment. You know, every month. And they don't even have a bonus, and the Konami believes believes in no bonus, so they kind of give a, a little bit more than the regular company, and they break it down to twelve times. So whatever the money, you know, it's the same. He doesn't get right. more because the Metal Gear Solid made more money. No, he doesn't get that either. Before they used to have a profit share, but they don't even have profit share anymore. Oh, so whatever man. the money. You know, the uh, video game, the Metal Gear or whatever that he produced may, he doesn't even get that. So, so he, it's a different, yeah, different type of, uh, you know, salary than the American video game company, I think. Wow. So, because he American gets, company, yeah, different. so he gets what he gets and that's it. That's it. Wow. He doesn't get anything. Yeah. So that's why, you know, for him, it's like, that's why. I'm just gonna make keep doing what I'm doing, and uh, I'm not making more or less, you know. So whatever the money he's making, he's making the same amount of money. So you know, for him, it's like it's the same. He, now, did that work? Did that work for? Uh, did that work the same for you too? Well, my my budget got increased. <laughs> Let me tell you that. <laughs> uh, for me, because the first one they didn't have, they had no idea. How much you know music gonna? I mean, how much uh, you know how much uh, video game is gonna sell? For me, um, I actually put my own money 
uh, they didn't have enough money for me to go island at that time. And I had a five different projects going on at the same time with the record company and the other artists I was working on overseas. So I said, don't worry about it. I'll just put my own money. Uh, if, if I don't have enough money, I'll put my own money. And that's, you know, that's what I did. Because I truly believe in it, you know. Go ahead, Gabe. Oh, oh, actually, yeah, I don't know. Can you, can you take the next question, Mike? Sure. Um, one of the, uh, oh. I think this song kind of got overlooked a little bit in Metal Gear Solid Three. Don't be afraid. I think it was featured in the scene, uh, a love scene with Snake right. and the female protagonist uh, Eva. Right. Uh, right. How did that one come about? I mean, you say that you didn't see, you know, you hardly really saw the games. Um, so I actually saw the the uh, footage because, like I say, every time oh. um, you know somebody, um, I mean, I put my music. They always give me like um, you know CD ROM. This is how how we use, and it's, now I could go on YouTube and I could see it. So I actually see how they use my music. Um, but oh. what happened with uh, originally that "Don't Be Afraid" was gonna become, I think theme songs or something and then because of budget uh, uh, what happened is the employee he, he did was like do me a favor can you help my employee to write music uh, that was uh, was Hibino oh, yeah. and I had the uh, what happened is like you know he he, he did beg me to share my budget with his employee uh, Hibino and help him to write the music that was Snake Eater I it basically arranged all his music and made it much better than what he had. And I hired a uh, singer, then I made it into a totally different song, which that was a snake eater. So I supposed to be writing the music for a theme song. Then, you know, Hibino had an idea. Uh, he wanted to write, I guess he, you know, he's an employee at the uh, uh, Konami at that time. So, so he did beg me to, you know, share my budget and uh, can you have him write the theme song, then uh, can you write, you know, he knew, you know, Hibino wasn't cut out to be able to do it, so he asked me, can you write, you know, can you help arrange the music and, you know, um, share your budget, so I, you know, I had the full budget, then uh, my budget got cut down, so I had to write music, something simple and something cheaper, <laughs> and, uh, you know, and uh, all my budget went into Hibino's uh, music instead of me. So I had to kind of make my music is a lot simpler than uh, his, and uh, just kind of, you know, that's why I ended up writing musical jazz, and I could get the jazz musician and the string orchestra, and, you know, it was like one take, you know, for me, you know, so. So, so you, that's put, what you put all of the uh, pieces together for the song Snake Eater? Yeah, I, I bet all the Very programming, cool. arrangements, and everything. I, I'm basically, whatever the, you hear the music for Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, 3, 4, I produce all of it. I get the budget. I get more than composer job. People right. don't realize that. I get production, you know, budget. So I'm the one uh, putting out, you know, put the budget together. I put the, you know, uh, I hired the engineer, compo uh, hired the musician to orchestra singers to whoever that you hear on the uh, music very 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 cool that's uh that's very interesting like i mean you um when you play the games i mean you watch the intros and it shows the who did the music and everything like that like for metal gear solid 2 3 uh four as well i think and i think he's even doing music for five harry gregson williams um <coughs> It says it, it credits him as the composer. Why don't they mm -hmm. put your name in, in the credits as well? I mean, that's that's almost like a slap in the face. Yeah, I, I took that uh, abuse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for definitely. Yeah, twenty years, and uh, I'm I'm so I'm I'm the one brought Harry Gresson Williams into this picture. Then you know, at the end of, the, because you know, in Hideo's mind, he is a you know composer from Hollywood. You know, in Japanese people, they only look at the credit, and I'm the you know resource behind and idea and everything. But you know, I think the music. You probably will hear the difference between all the music from Metal Gear 1, 2, 3, 4, and the 5. So I'm kind of 
curious to hear what the fans are gonna say because I think the music is suffer tremendously because I'm not there. <laughs> but they gotta, you know, because the budget, they have to cut me. Uh, uh, they say I'm too expensive. A lot of people actually wanted to know that, and I think I think we kind of already know the answer. Is your music yeah. featured in the Phantom Pain? Excuse me. I said, is your music featured in the Phantom Pain? Is my music featured in the Metal Gear Solid Five? No. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. No. No, I was involved with uh, in the beginning, and uh, uh, you know, Hideo had an issue. Uh, you know, he. I mean, basically, what they wanted to do is they wanted to cut down the budget. So they had to let go of me, and then they want. I, I told them they could go ahead and uh, you know work with Hideo, uh, Harry, oh. and uh, Hideo's uh, not Hideo, the Harry's, uh, um, you know, uh, the guy that actually was writing for Harry. He, you know, Harry was too busy, so we actually had the other guy, uh, Ghost Rider, writing for the music for Metal Gear. I had to disappoint you, but Harry wasn't writing all the music. And that just goes in Hollywood. Uh, Harry, Gresham Williams, other composer have uh, hundreds of, uh, you know, a uh, composer behind uh, writing, working for them. You know. Yeah, it definitely. Like, like I said, I mean, I'm not trying to discredit any of the other musicians who do the music for the games. I just felt like, um, and no offense, uh, writers of Metal Gear, uh, but I feel like they got too much credit, especially yeah. when you were behind quite a bit of it. Yeah, but it's okay. You know, I'm I'm gonna start doing my own thing, so they're gonna start seeing that, because you know, finally, because actually, I'm really happy he there left, whatever the reason, and I'm really happy he will be able to do what he wants to do, uh, uh, maybe, uh, with that Konami, and I hope you know, I I told him to get out of the company, but more than ten years ago, you know, get the hedge fund money and start your own company, but. He didn't think like that because he's more Japanese, and I think like that because I grew up half of my life here in America, so I don't really think like a Japanese people. So, so, he, so he really just kind of wanted to take the traditional route. Yeah, well, like I said, his, his money hasn't changed for 20 years. <laughs> so he's happy just getting this monthly salary, you know what I mean? Right. He's just happy getting the stable income every month and be able to create. So that's to me, it's not a creator. That's to me, it's just you working for nine to five. You know, Absolutely. see, I'm a freelance. So even though I don't have a job for God knows how long, I'm okay because that's all I chose. You know, if I was a musician, that's just, you know, I need to find the next gig. And that's how my mentality is. Like, I'm a freelance forever because I'm a musician. I'm a jazz musician from the heart, you know. So I'm more, I'm, I'm like a, you know, I mean, one of those struggle artists all the way, you know what I mean? Right. Till I die. I think I want to have that, you know, hungriness in my, because if I start making a lot of money, then I, I'm not creative, you know. Right. Uh, but, uh, you know, I have made a lot of money for other people will think, yes, I have, and uh, thank God for that. But still, you know, um, I'm still the same, you know, I'm still like a, I'm still trying to get a gig uh, next, you know, uh, event, next, you know, uh, club or whatever, next production, you know, I'm, I'm still the same, you know, I'm still doing the same things ever since I started out when I was 16 years old. I've been doing this for a long time and I've been doing this same thing over and over again. I put the budget together, I put the musician, I've been doing it since I was 16 years old, I was band leader. Uh, this funny thing that happened is like when I was 16, I got hired to do a gig in the club, and they're all like a, you know, legend, like a, you know, in that field, the jazz musician. They were a lot older than me. They were like 60, 70 years old. I was only 16, 17 at that time, and they realized I had a talent to be a band leader, and not only that, I had a talent to be an, a, a really good negotiator to the club owner or the event, you know, organizer or something. So they all like Rika, you got skills. <laughs> like, what do you mean I got skills? No, you know how to talk to these people. So you know what you should you should negotiate with all, our, you know, jobs that we have coming up. So that's how I became band leader <laughs> at the age seventeen, eighteen. So I was a kid. I didn't know, and they would tell me what to ask. So I just go and ask, and I get I got everything I needed and or more. So they're like, you that's a that's a talent, you know. Most musicians can't do that. 
Right. So I didn't know, you know, that was talent on that, but they, they just told me a lot about the music business, and I'm, I'm so thankful that they taught me about copyrights, publishing, and having to license your music, and that's going to be the asset instead of just being a player. So I, I knew about writing music. It's, a, you know, it's going to be commodity. It's going to be my asset for the rest of my life. So they taught me that when I was 16, 17 years old. So I was like, you know, ahead of the time, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, um, John, you want to take the next question? Um, I'm, a, right. yeah. I'm a little lost. I just I just got here. Uh, uh, um, can somebody run me up to speed real quick? Go ahead, Gabe. Okay. No, oh, crap. On um, me? Yes. Uh, you, wait, so you want me to take the question? Yeah, you, you go and take the question. I'll, um, oh, okay. Um... Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I still can't get used. To, I still not get used. I still can't get used to all these interviews and stuff. I'm always really nervous when I'm doing them. No, why? <laughs> why are you nervous? I don't know. Just it's just something I've always, you know, ever like. I've, I've, we've done like two of these now, and uh, it's just like I, I, I'm always really like. I, I okay, well, I'll get. Um, I'm. I'm waiting. John, well, you know just me. Ask just talk to me like you're talking to your mom. I'd probably be like uh, older than you, like your mom. Anyway, hey mom, you uh, know what's it for dinner tonight? You know that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, I guess I'll take. Uh, all right. I guess. Uh, yeah. So and we know you're um doing some like uh, work with the orchestra now. Is that, is that correct? Uh, if you could tell us about that, that'd be um that'd be great. Tell about the orchestra, or what? Oh, something. Oh. You told me uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago that you're going to be traveling with an orchestra. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I am um, actually going to be um, doing a concert with Akira. Maybe his schedule is good. I'm going to be doing a concert with Akira in Mexicali. Hmm. Uh, November this year. Then next year I'll be traveling. Um, I think I'm going to be part of Video Game Live. I'm not sure. Uh, Dubai. Want me to come and perform with the orchestra? I think Spain and Italy, and uh, Brazil, so and uh, other you know places that Comic Con overseas uh, actually want me to come and perform mm -hmm. uh, the music I've done for the past twenty years. So you know I'm kind of excited about that. And this year, you know, um, a lot of these Comic Con they really don't have the budget. So you know what I'm doing is I'm just gonna go and you know meet fans because it's always interesting to see fans and. I uh, hear what they think about the music, and uh, they actually inspire me to, you know, continue to do what I'm doing. So, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm starting to go to um, Comic Con, like, starting 6th of August. I'm going to Utah, Salt Lake, Utah. Uh, I'm going to Florida, Orlando. Uh, then I'm going to Arizona, uh, Virginia, Dubai, Brazil, Italy, and I'm I'm going everywhere this year. Just to now, do you meet know? Meet the fans. Do you know when you'll uh, be going to Florida to Comic Con? Uh, I'm going on the I think 15th, 16th, 14th, 15th, 16th. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm on there. Orlando, Florida. Orlando. Yeah. Okay. Why? I'll have to make my way there. I'm in Orla or I'm in Florida myself. Oh, good. So you need to come in. I haven't really got back to the organizer because they said they really don't have the money to fly me. But I say, well, maybe I, I want to go because I want to, you know, I want the support. So I might just go there just to go there. And uh, I don't care about the money. So I'm just going to say, oh, I might, I might just go out there. You know? Definitely. Uh, I know yeah, I'm so, for that. So. Because oh, I yeah. think a lot of fans, if you could plug in the Florida to have people come, because uh, I made this cool T-shirts, which I'm going to send you all you guys. So send me all the address. I haven't had a chance to go to FedEx yet, so I'm sorry. Give me all your guys' size. I'm going to send you guys my... Uh, did you see the black T-shirts with the red explanation mark? Yes. Oh, yeah, so yeah, nice. I did. You like that? It's awesome. Yeah, Wait, so are you I'm, being... I'm, I'm actually, you yes, know, whoever on. comes to the Comic-Con... Um, they're gonna get free T-shirts, you know, instead of just the autograph. I'm, I'm gonna give them away the autograph and the T-shirts. That's a pretty good deal, right? It is very yeah. good deal for the fans. Right for the fans, right? So I'm like, you know what? Fans gonna pay like how much to just get an autograph? I thought that was ridiculous <laughs> myself. 
And, uh, you know, a lot of fans, they really don't have any money. And uh, I had this one guy came to Comic-Con two weeks ago, and that was my first Comic-Con that I did in the United States. And this guy would come, show up every day for three days. He would just sit and talk to me every single day. Okay, he won't buy anything because he's, you know, I knew he didn't have the money. So by the end of the day, the <laughs> third day, I just ended up giving him a T-shirt. Here, here's a T-shirt's autograph, and he was happy. So I think I did that That's for a couple awesome. of times. You know, I mean, kids, you know, they're, they're just having a hard time just paying to get in, you know. I feel bad, you know, because, you know, they're just kids. I'm sure their allowance isn't that much. You know, they have to ask their mom or, you know, whoever. And so, some of the kids, they don't even look like they have money. So, you know, I felt bad. Then, uh, you know, the great kids like, well, can you write here an autograph? And because I, I signed autograph in his brochure in my... Uh, guys look at me it's like oh we still had to charge you and he's like oh, i only have four dollars i'm like what <laughs> and everybody's like you autograph already you can't you can't charge them and i'm, I'm like no i am like forget it i don't need four dollars just keep it you know i mean it's just some of the kids they really don't have the money but they really want to get an autograph and talk to me so you know i understand you know that's how probably i was when i was a kid you know yeah so so really I just want to kind of, you know, get back to the people, get back to the kids. You know, they, they said they listened to my music. I, I just wanted to talk to them. Uh, what kind of, you know, and a lot. I was like really, really fascinated. They all knew my music. <laughs> huh. I didn't awesome. know anybody listened to my music, huh. you know. So I was like, oh, okay. I got a lot of people listening to my music. So that's mm -hmm. kind of a good feeling, you know. Definitely. Huh. Definitely. Yeah. But I, I think yeah. that's, I think that's, I think that's, um, that's, bleh, sorry. Um, I think that's uh, pretty amazing that, you know, you're not just like somebody who's going to go and say, oh, it's like, oh, this is how it is, you know, like that, you know. And like, you know, basically if somebody has some sort of issue or something, you're not just going to be like, you know, kick them like while they're down or anything. That's awesome. Yeah, because, you know, there are people and I'm, you know, I'm not really, you know, I'm not really like snob like other people think, you know, I'm just like down to earth, you know, I'm probably more real than anybody, you know, I understand not having money, I understand not having money. Um, I'm you know the both worlds, so I understand, you know. Um, so I just relate to people, you know. Absolutely. Oh my. Oh my. Um. Uh, before we move on from the Metal Gear questions, I know we, that's pretty much what we've been talking about the whole time. And uh, I, number one, I apologize for that. Uh, very last question. Okay. It's a fan question. Uh, I pretty sure it may, it may come from all of us and um i've already asked you and you've told me uh, when we were talking on twitter um but were you to pick a song from any of the games that you've composed for which one would be your favorite and why the best is yet to come i think that was the first one i worked with hideo like i told you right. he gave me this question like can you write a song uh, that i don't want to know and recognize the language <laughs> you know, that was his question. Can you write some 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 song other than French, Spanish, German, and you know he had the list whole list. So that's whole language, you know. So I had to kind of go left curve, and I said, "How about Gaelic?" He's like, "Gaelic? What the hell's Gaelic?" So I got him on that. You know, oh, I got him on that. <laughs> um, oh, there's, that, there's, there's something I've always wondered about this song is, um, where did the the title "The Best Is Yet to Come" come from? The best is yet to come. At the, at the good things in life are still yet to come. <laughs> and okay. uh, you should you should appreciate the simple thing in life. You know, people kind of forget. You know, um, just uh, walking you, walking you know down the street with your dog. That's to me. That's you know most enjoyment, like a joyful moment in my life right now. Every day, you know, just be able to walk with my dog. You know, and she's so happy just going out there walking with me and she is my best trainer and uh she's looking at me like she wants to go out soon so <laughs> uh well, i'm gonna we won't keep you too much longer um <coughs> one song we haven't touched on and i'm ashamed of myself because i'm a huge fan of this series as well let's talk about the ending theme for silent hill okay, um, i read that in argentina Really? Buenos Aires. Is that where the title comes from? Uh, Esperante. Uh, waiting. 
it's waiting is I got the title because of the, the kind of when Akira explained to me what the game is again I have did never seen the game he says it's a kind of like a real scary yeah. game just like uh, biohazards or you know residents of evil type of thing and uh, you know um, he and I talk and it's like okay then uh, he has to be kind of spooky then again they want something different so I said how about tango and then I told Akira, it's almost like I had a fight with Akira, but I'm a really good friend with him. But like, uh, I'm like, Akira, just listen, you know, you just, uh, you working here nine to five, you know, because you can get a record deal. Dude, seriously, let me just go and do what I do. Then I think you'll be happy. Just, you know, again, that didn't have the budget either. Hold, this is in the beginning. So I said, don't worry about it. I got five projects going. I'm just going to go Argentina record. And that's what happened. And I came back with the music. I don't know if it's like a, you know, it's a good or bad. I don't know. Some people like it. Some people don't because you probably don't fit into that whole video game. It's so odd. Maybe, you know, people don't know anything about Tango. Uh, but I was a, I was fortunate to be able to record with one of the original member of Pia Sola. Uh, the guy, you know, guy's a legend. And uh, you know, he's probably the only guy who really made it internationally as a band neon you know and the composer uh that's you know i was influenced by that guy so i was like well i think we should record it in uh, argentina so i went now when you excuse me when you say akira are you talking about the uh, the composer for the silent hill games yeah he was also the producer at the time right yeah absolutely okay so you cool. know i had to talk I had to talk to him. That's why I'm, I'm going to be having a concert with him, um, Silent Hill, um, Mexicali, okay. with him uh, this year in November. So, you know, Astor Piazzolla is one of the best Argentina tango composer, banyan player and arranger, and uh, he has changed the uh, the way of looking at the bandian of the tango music into another level of an art form and you know so i was so much fond of his music uh, and uh, i wanted to do something different i thought okay you know then uh, akira told me this is about you know uh, waiting to see who's gonna come the next you know object the next spooky I don't know, whatever, the, you know, the nurse or whatever, the, you know, I don't know. They have all kinds of people coming in, and it's, it's like they're always hiding at the Simon Hill game. So he says that somebody's waiting for you, watching you. So that's kind of my lyrics was that somebody's always watching and waiting for you at the corner or whatever. So I kind of wrote the song like that in the Spanish. I love it. I, I That's one of my favorites, so. Oh, okay. Good job on that one. <laughs> Not many people... I don't know, actually knew that song was ex exist because I think they all had the happy ending instead of bad ending. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, right. <laughs> so if you don't play the bad ending, you don't know my song. Exactly. So if you went and played the bad ending all the time, you, you heard my music a lot of time. But if you didn't, you know, if you had a, if you, you know, had a good ending, then you don't have to listen to my music. You didn't have to listen to my music. Well, I prefer the bad, the bad ending music. <laughs> um. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Andy. Sorry, before we continue, I just wanted to ask if uh, uh, Daly or John had anything because you know I know they've been absolutely. Uh, yeah, I've I've got something. John, do you got something you want to go for? You haven't asked anything yet, man. Um, well, I'm I'm more. I don't know what we've already asked. Is the thing. Um, I would like maybe a quarter way down the page, maybe. Um. Um. Are you yeah, guys, was, how are you going to how are you guys going to publish it in writing and how are you going to do this? Um, what we're doing right now is we are recording the video. We're recording where we're streaming from, and then we're going to upload okay. that to YouTube later. Yeah, oh, we cool. have a, a channel oh. the same same name. Um, really, uh, I've, I've lost the question. Too. When I, I'm oh, sorry. I have my subscribe like a uh, YouTube channel. Maybe you guys could yeah, upload I've that. Seen it. Yeah. Okay. I don't know anybody watching uh, that. I'm I'm trying to make a reality TV show. I'm actually shooting. <laughs> I'm the one with the camera <laughs> cool. behind. 
I know it's crazy. I had this idea, and I actually had a really good camera, you know, camera woman. I I'll say, I could really take a good photograph and you know, um, record you know whatever the object is. So right now technology is so good. You really don't need to have a skills. All you gotta do is push the button. <laughs> right. You have to have a good ISO and a good focus and a, and good a selfie angle. stick. And uh, right now it's like a video camera. We have to have before. You need to have a tech. You need to have a technique, and you have yeah. to know the, all the aperture, then ISO, then all that frame, you know, speed shots and everything. But right now, the camera got computer technology so great. Oh, yeah. You don't even have to be, you know, camera shabby or technology shabby to do all that stuff. So huh. I could actually take pretty good, you know, uh, shot. And I yeah. showed to a lot of people in the industry. They're like, "You shot this." You shot this? Are you sure? It's like, yeah, the camera does everything, dude. Seriously, you just have a good idea, and you can, you, yeah. you know. So, and I edit too. So it's just, you know, right now I'm shooting, and now I think I got network is cable network is interesting. Follow me around everywhere I go and a Comic Con. Hmm. Very cool. Which uh, is, yeah. So I, I had I did have a question for you. It. Um, it, it uh, pertains to just your work in general over across all of the games. Is there any song that you, because you talked a little bit earlier about how you would rewrite songs or you would send stuff in that would get denied. Is there a song that you absolutely <laughs> loved that never made it into a game? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was thinking, like, I had to go into my storage, but I have, like, a 20 drives. Each one's about 500 <laughs> to one terabyte. So I was thinking maybe I should just release that, you know, denied by Hideo that's, Kojima. That, that's what yeah. that's what I was getting at because I'm sure if you wrote all of this stuff um, for for all of these I games, have great, great there's got to be great stuff. Yeah, I exactly. got great music. He, he didn't really approve, and I was like, why didn't you pick this one? This is better than, you know, but whatever. <laughs> it's a political reason. And, uh, you know, at that time, maybe he felt that way in his emotion because he goes by the emotion. It's not by the yeah. really sound like it. So uh, whatever the time his situation is, you know, he feel like he wanted to deny. That's fine. You know, whatever. So, um, you know, I have a lot of music and a lot of fans ask me, can you release those? And I'm sure a lot of fans will probably want to hear that. <laughs> right, I, I I would definitely uh, be one to, excited to see some of the stuff that didn't necessarily make it, yes. and just kind of see, you know, what what didn't make it could be just as good as what did. <laughs> so maybe that's my next CD then. Okay, okay. <laughs> Wherever I go to Comic Con, maybe that's what I should sell, because I I noticed that people want to buy a soundtrack instead of the. I have a lot of video game. You should definitely come out to my Comic Con. Because I have a lot of video game uh, that you can only get in Japan. Like my parents actually literally stand five, six hours in the cold and they got it, and with uh, among with other fans. And uh, they were only allowed two. You know, you can only allowed to buy two at a time. One person could only buy two video game. And my mom and my dad, between both of them, they got like a, you know, limited edition version of that. So I have a lot of things that you can't buy, and you know. My my parents was great. They will line up, you know. Oh, this is my daughter's music, and awesome. like whatever. They will tell everybody who's standing there. It's like, ma, please, you know, <laughs> because I can go. <laughs> so my parents was in Japan at that time, and they were still alive, and they will support me in that way. They would go to the video game shop, like you would stand with the other kids, you know. They probably look at them, why are they here? You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> <laughs> So that's how I got all the unlimited, like a uh, limited, like a limited edition, not unlimited, limited edition from, uh, you know, that you can only get in Japan. So I have those, and you know, I'm trying to get rid of a lot of stuff. My my place in Tokyo is getting really, really cluttered. So everybody's like, why don't you get rid of it? You know, so I, I guess I could. So I'm I'm trying to get rid of a lot of my, you know, I have a whole entire room full of video games. So I that's brought back cool. a lot of stuff. Uh, because my parents, uh, so I'm, you know, like a little bit, I thought a fan might want to, I, I could share with them. I thought maybe a fan wants to see it and want to, you know, and, you know, a lot of time they'll come and say, oh my God, I can't believe you have this, you know. So I get that a lot and um, they'd like to see that. So, yeah. 
It's kind of interesting. Yeah, I, I definitely think the fans would love to see some of that unreleased stuff. I, I definitely, uh, I, <laughs> I, I think it would be very, very cool. Uh, just not, say that. Not kidding. Um, I would like as well. So, so uh, then my last question for you before I uh, before I switch it over is: I was very curious about you. You do you're you're the composer, and you put these groups together for all for the the Metal Gear games and such. How do you decide? what songs you're going to sing personally and what songs you're going to make personally and then which ones you're going to uh, give out, like, for instance, like Cynthia Hall or Donna Burke or uh, any of the other singers or composers that are uh, people that make the music that, in Metal Gear. Do you pick specific, like, elements that you want to do yourself or specific songs, or is it just kind of luck of the draw who gets to do what? No, 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 no. I, I actually, you know, compose music. And now I have a singer in my mind who's going to fit. And so I okay. actually write music for that specific singer. And ah, that makes finished. way more sense. And also, I have already know, okay, the Cynthia have a good range. And she has a, a certain tone. And I know Elisa could, you know, and she's more jazz than the Cynthia. Because Cynthia uh, have done all the jingles, you know, for... God knows how long for maybe 20, 30 years and decades. And uh, she was a commercial queen in Chicago. That's how I met her in Chicago right. when I was, you know, I was in Chicago. And she did all the advertisement from McDonald's to United Airlines to any, you name it. But was it, wherever you hear in the music right now, the commercial singing, that was her. You know what I mean? Oh, and back very, in the days. Very cool. So she, you know, she, she's like another, you know, one, you know, uh, People know her voice, but people really don't know her. Same thing like Luther Vandross. He was a jingle uh, singer before he became a star. You know, a lot of, you know, jingles. Oh. Same thing with Barry Merrill. And uh, what's his name? Um, Billy Joel. He was a jingle writer. He was writing jingle. <laughs> yeah, me too. So he was a, he writes commercial because that's why he's, his music is so good. His whole hook you know, hookies and like really, really, you know, he, he's so calculated and he just writes a brilliant, brilliant music and the brilliant song, catchy phrase and commercial writing. He's a superb in the commercial writing. So a lot of, you know, people who, you know, you know, uh, used to be working in a um, commercial advertisement world, you know. Very cool. Well, thank you for answering that. Guys, that was uh, my last question on these, uh, on these topics. So, uh, Jonathan? Take it. Okay. Um, um, we uh, <laughs> we understand you're working on a on a mobile game. Yeah, I'm I'm still trying to raise some money. I'm I'm doing the drifting. I know the original Drift King, uh, Kenichi Tsuchiya, the guy who taught uh, Paul Walker, the Fast and Furious. You know, Drift King was uh, he was the original uh, inventor for drifting like how to drive and drifting and the shifting gears and all that stuff and putting in neutral. And, uh, you know, so I have a drift team in Japan. Um, so I want to bring them over here in J from Japan and I want to create the show, uh, my reality show. I want to bring this one girl. She is a champion, lady champion in Japan. And I want her to teach Snoop Dogg how to dr drift here in, you know, in the United States, maybe in Vegas. That's where Snoop lives. So I want to bring her here, and uh, I want to go up to some say, you know, hey, this girl could drift, or, you know, she could really, really drive, and she could race, you know, so he's probably going to laugh, you know. So that's kind of kind of funny, and I want to make a TV show, and I want to make a video game of drifting, drift game, online and uh, mobile app. It's not a really cool drifting game out there, um, because it... See, like drifting is about modifying the car. So I want to make the video uh, video game and how to modify and make your own own drift car. Then you could race with against all the other car, and maybe online interactive, like online with the. If I'm here in LA, I could actually play with the guys in you know New York or Africa, and you have your own own car, like your own special car that you could only kind of make it, you know. That kind of stuff. And I want to. I have a guy in Japan who uh, who actually modified drift, 
of the car, regular car, regular Nissan, you know, GTR to drift car. So those things, I think the kids, you know, I think a lot of, you know, uh, drift fan, like drifting, like if people go to the race and stuff, uh, they're really, really into modifying their car. I think they would love to see how Japanese people uh, modify their car. So I kind of want to, it's not just a drifting game, but it's more like a, you could make your own, you know, own original car. Very cool. Sounds like Kickstarter is in order. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, right. Are you, oh, are you, um, are you just composing? Are you, what is your part in this game? I'm, I'm going to make it. I'm going to, I'm going to raise the money. I'm going to, I actually made two software already to about 20 years ago. So, um, I'm, I'm going to produce it. I'm going to, you know, I'm definitely going to hire the studio to do all that, but I'm going to oversee it. So I'm, I'm going to raise the money and, uh, you know, make a drift game. She get Hideo to do it. Nah, <laughs> no, he can't do it because he doesn't um, know the drift one. Uh-uh. Yeah, this is more it, uh, like a passion for me than anything. And I'm also uh, making a okay. uh, um, not like a American Idol meets a real world type of you know uh, reality TV show. I'm gonna show how to make a star behind the scenes and uh, create uh, hit songs. And I'm going to show everything on TV, and people can follow me on TV, and I'm going to make a video game out of that, too. It's like a Monopoly game, you know, how do you make a star, then uh, if you make a bad decision, you gotta, even if you got a record deal, you end up losing all the money, because you made the bad decision, you know, that kind right. of stuff. And I'm going to make a, a karaoke game with that. Online, not online, like a, with the mobile app, I could have like a karaoke with it, and I'm gonna have all the music that you could sing to it, and uh, you have a, uh, you have a score. Okay, you you miss about uh, three different notes here, uh, eight bars. You miss this pitch, you miss this rhythm, and then you know I'm gonna have a whole like uh, analyze with the a a karaoke. You sing, you get like oh, you about 67 percent, you almost perfect, you know that kind of stuff. So I, I have a lot of idea what kind you know the kind of the game that I want to make with the TV show. Then also you could experience it shopping too. I'm gonna have all kinds of uh, products placements within the video game and uh, TV that we could click it. You can go and buy online instantly. Nice. Yeah, that sounds so I need more than Kickstarter. I, I need about I need money. Okay, I need somebody who's got money. <laughs> hey, uh, Kickstarter does pretty good nowadays. I think uh, Bloodstained hit five million. Yeah, I need uh, more than five million. Yeah. I'm, I'm talking looking about hundred million dollars to start the you know <laughs> 360 media company. Ooh, I'm talking yeah. hedge fund, Wall Street people. <laughs> yeah, I'm, this... I'm, going the, I'm, I'm going for the real money here. <laughs> yeah, go. that's. Yeah, that whole concept sounds really amazing, and I'm a big fan of customization stuff in general. Like, I'll spend, yeah. like, like say, in a, like, in a game where you can customize a character, I'll spend, like, hours doing that. <laughs> right. And then just so, add, adding that to, sorry. No, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, but I, I know, I know the Drift game, that they don't have enough customization, though. That's yeah. why we're, I know the, yeah. the engineer, the guy who does this for a living, and he's the number one uh, Drift driver in Japan. And he's actually a mechanic too, so I'm, I'm talking about a real mechanic is showing how to make your car into a drift car. And that's, that's like, a, you know what I mean? Anybody wants to watch that. Anybody wants to get hold of that, you know what I mean? Right. So more like um, education type of thing. Like for me, it's like a game and educating kids, educating people. This is how you do it. This is how you drift. And it's more like a, even the game I'm going to, it's like I'm going to have a original a Drift King, maybe Kenny Tsuchiya or somebody uh, to cool. show them how to drift in a video game. This is how you drift, you know what I mean? Instead of just you right. just trying to do it with a, you know, just a PlayStation console, you're actually going to learn how to drift by watching the video game. Right. That's, All right. Awesome. that's pretty cool, right? That is pretty cool. It's not so. It's more like a simulator than just an arcade style driving game. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh. I'm, I'm kind of like looking at the flight flight simulation type of thing. Plus, like a, you you gotta feel it that you're really drifting, and then you you gotta you know race with the other guy. 
But you, you get to really feel the drifting of yourself. If I have money, I want to do the vibration and body sonic and vibrate the whole entire, you know, sound, check yeah. it out, the sound, you know, with the arcade thing. And that's what we really want to do. Maybe That'd I need to, cool. you know, that, maybe I need to sell that idea to somebody. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one thing I haven't caught, um, what is the title of this game? I haven't really thought about it. I have, if you go to my channel, it's called Hollywood Dream. It's going to be Hollywood Dream. Hollywood Dream Drift Team, so it's gonna be Hollywood Dream, Hollywood Dream Drifting Game, I guess. I'm gonna within the Hollywood Dream TV show, I'm gonna have a different online game app and all that stuff. Right. So you know, you you could enjoy watching TV, or you could go online and you know you could play a game at the same time. All right. Well, um, it has been done available. before. Uh, if this does get released, uh, will it be available on? Uh, Android and uh, what do you call it? iOS. iOS, yes. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Good. Yeah. Good. All right. I, I think me, I'm not into like I'm not gonna make the same mistake that Konami made. I'm not trying to spend a couple hundred million dollars making triple A video game and not be able to you know recoup it. <laughs> so I'm doing like a real like you know I'm like you know I, I'm more into budget. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm not trying to go over budget, and you know, I'm trying to make a video game really, really low cost, and uh, you know that's why I'm I'm putting together with the uh, TV, YouTube, and you know just whatever the digital technology, the format, media, social media, and everything's available right now. So it's a different time, a different era. So I could promote my video game and TV in a different way. Yeah. Gotcha. Right. Um. Uh, you want to take that Comic Con question, Mike? Yeah. Um, so, as you've already told us, you were recently in Comic Con over at uh, <laughs> Connecticut. I actually bugged the hell out of you while you were at Comic Con in Connecticut. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. <clears throat> You're continuing to do the events. Uh, how's how's the experience and interactions with the fans actually been? I mean, has it been enjoyable, or does it sometimes seem more like a chore? No, no, I, I really enjoy talking to these people because, like I said, this is my first time. And I, I was really, really fascinated by watching these cosplayers because I really don't get to go to these places, you know, in Japan either. And uh, cosplayers in Japan, cosplayers are cosplayer. They don't really, you know, I mean, I know a lot of cosplayers in Japan, but they like a semi-professional. That's what they do for a living. And in America, people just dress up to go to Comic-Con. That's why... I was like really intrigued and fascinated because people just come to Comic Con dressed up, like wow, you yeah, know? yeah, <laughs> and it's, it's like wow, you 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 do this, you made this, and you. I was just like I was asking them, I was like fascinated. I was like I really really enjoyed it because I wanted to know how do you guys make these costumes? And some people <laughs> said they took about a year. Uh, where do you get these ideas? And you know, I was just interviewing interviewing everybody that I saw. It was interesting. You know, it's like it's like I know I wrote uh, you know most of the music to some of your favorite video games, but tell me how you made that costume. You know? Yeah, that's what I did. That's what I I swear to God, that's how I was like you know I'm a composer, but I'm just really curious. You know, okay, like and some of the you know uh, kids, I don't know what they are dressed up for. I have no idea because I don't play any of those games. So I had to ask, what are you? You know, what are you trying to be? You know, I had to ask them. But some of them is very provocative, and some of them, you know, some yes. very, very interesting, very, uh, wow. It's just like a, like they could get a, a job in the Hollywood, you know, because some of the costume was like unbelievably good, you know. Right. Yeah. So I was just like really, really curious. I, I, I really, really enjoy. It's not really a chore for me because I really enjoy talking to the fans, and they, they really understand. You know, what's I mean, they are real fans. You know, they they like they know everything about me before I explain to them. They know about me. I'm like, wow, it's crazy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was just like you know, it's an interesting experience. You know, so I kind of continue to do it because I want actually I want to have a TV show with the Comic Con and with the Hollywood Dream. So I'm just going there just to to see. You know, so I could and also a lot of my friends in Japan want to see what's going on at Comic-Con here in America, so it's kind of interesting, you know? Right. Um, I think... I, is this our last question? Um, 
Okay, well, okay. I'll take this one. Um, since, obviously, you're no longer composing music for Konami, um, are there any other... Um, are you looking to work for any other... Uh, like, to compose video music game? for video games, basically? Yeah, definitely. I, I love to, but I don't know any other video games other than Konami. Because I was so loyal and I couldn't work for other companies, so I never really, you know, I built a relationship with any other uh, company in Japan or outside. So if anybody wants to hire me, hey, let me know. I'm I'm available. <laughs> you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I posted on Twitter. I was like, you know what? Yeah. Next, I'm gonna make a game, or maybe I said I was gonna make a movie. I'm gonna make a movie, and I want you to do the music for it. Plain and simple. Definitely. Yeah. Yep. But I actually hmm. get a lot of, um, you know, um, the Steam game. What's going on with the Steam? I want to know about the Steam game. It's like, all of a sudden, it's like it's a new era. It's Steam game. Steam is so big now, you know. And uh, I got into, I actually was introduced to one guy uh, in France, and uh, I, I think he's making presentation to Microsoft soon. Hopefully he get the funding, and he said he wants to hire me to do the music. I said, okay, great, you know. So, so I think the independent guys actually start to make a creative game, and I'm really, really you know, I, I, I don't, you know, like I said, I'm not really, I don't care about getting big money in for the Konami. I'm, I'm more into art. I'm more into, like, I just want to write music for a video game, and sometimes really creating really cool game. I want to I wanna be there. I want to write music, you know, for that game, you know. Oh, film or TV, whatever, you know, because right, right. if you produce, uh, I, I believe if you create something really, really good, I think people are going to follow it and people are going to buy it. So I'm not, that's what happened to my whole entire career. It's like, I didn't really think about the money because I never really thought I could make money doing what I'm doing, you know? Yeah. As yeah. most people do. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people don't think they can make money doing what they love to do. And that's why a lot yeah. of people just, they give up and, uh. I know that after Metal Gear Solid 4, um, you haven't done music for any, uh, at least any big AAA games, mm -mm. And, but you haven't given up, and I think that's a great thing, and I think it's very important that people realize that, you know. No, I'm not giving up anything. I'm, I'm going to the better, you know, situation than ever, so I'm more free than I have freedom. Thank God that I could create my own video game. I could create my own TV show. I could create my own film or merchandise, whatever, you know? So, um, you know, it's probably different than most Japanese people. It's like, oh my God, it's, I'm over. You know, I don't think like that. This is my new beginning, my turning point. I could do what I wanted to do, thank God. You know, so now I'm, I'm gonna start performing, get back to my musician. And, uh, I, you know, I was told a lot of fans want to see me, uh, hear me play. So I'm just gonna get out there and start playing. You know? Good. Yeah. Right. We all have to keep us updated on, uh, okay. on music in the future because I, I want to hear some of it. And like Daly said, um, come on, release some of that uh, unreleased music. <laughs> I got to go into yeah. my stores and look for it. And uh, definitely I will. Yeah, huh. I think a lot of fans really be waiting for that. I'll probably sell more that soundtrack than the yeah. Metal Gear. You right? need to start an <laughs> iTunes page. Huh. That would be perfect. Yes. Yeah. Hey, yes. Oh, that would be great. Absolutely. Okay. Let's do that. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, close this out. We kept her for an hour and a half, and I, I remember her mentioning that her dog was looking at her like she wanted to go out. Um, well, I took her out about uh, 3.30, and it was too hot. She just went three blocks, and she wanted to come home. <laughs> so it was too hot. She, my dog does not go out and it, when it's raining. My dog does not want to go. It's hot. She's a queen. Okay. <laughs> and she only eats the organic food. So I had to make her food every morning. Okay, she's spoiled. <laughs> yeah, I remember you told me the other day that you actually were making her food, and I was like, "She yep. eats her dog's food." <laughs> <laughs> mm. I don't even make my own food. Okay, she <laughs> she gets her own food every day. She is spoiled. <laughs> yeah, she is. Yeah, that that okay. yeah that dog she's probably. Like Sorry, I said that dog probably eats better than ninety percent of the American population. Oh, I say about ninety-nine percent. I swear, uh, she eats better than me. Yeah, <laughs> she really does. She eats uh, organic some. 
I had to go to the store and buy organic fresh salmon. She knows the difference between fresh and not fresh. Look at that. Now that, <laughs> That's crazy. that is a spoiled dog, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Um, well, Rika, it has been an absolute pleasure, oh. and uh, it's been a lot of fun. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you guys want to do it again, just let me know. You know, just, Absolutely. Just like yeah, maybe I'll actually be able to make it this time. <laughs> Rika, you know me. I, I will definitely keep in touch with you. Um, oh. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'll I'll let you guys from uh, next Comic Con, which is Utah in August six, I think, I believe. And uh, this is uh, I, I want to help this guy because he said this is his first one, first uh, video game event that he's doing. So I said, okay, I'll just come up. You know. It's awesome. Huh. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Um, All right. Okay. Thank you so much. All Have right. a great night. All right. Take Thank care. You too. Okay. All right. Bye bye. All right. Bye. <laughs> All right, everybody. That was Rika Murnaka. Uh, that was actually a very fun interview. Yeah, that was amazing, man. First and foremost, I would like to thank our very special co-host, Daly, from the Kodak. Thank awesome. you very much for being a part of this today. No uh, problem. I thought uh, for a minute there I was going to be on my own. I was scared to death, and uh, Daly was prepared to come through for me, and I appreciate that. Anytime, man. Anytime. All right. Uh, I'm not very lost because I came in. I'll send you the video file, man. Yeah, I'll need because yeah, I came like an hour in and. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, daily, I'll send you the video file too. You can upload it to the Frag Nation page if you want. Uh, well, I would appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, uh what, what did I did I miss anything like juicy? <laughs> Anything groundbreaking? Um, I, you, you did miss quite a bit, but like Gabe yeah. said, uh, he'll he'll send you the video. He'll fill you in. There ain't there's no sense in us going on through it. Um, yeah. I mean, everybody, the, well, the whole four viewers on Twitch, <laughs> they oh, uh, they got to hear it. So uh, we we'll get more on YouTube. What's that? We'll get we'll get more on YouTube. I and we'll put yeah. it on YouTube, of course. So 